Okay, can we start? Okay. Uh, we we'll start till nine point three. It's over, right? In yesterday's TA session. I think till nine point three. It's over. So we we'll start from nine point four. Okay. Fine. Uh, So we 9.4 is about limits, okay? Sometimes, uh, so first, what is the limit? In simple terms, what, what does limit mean? It's the value that the function approaches as Yeah, I have, I have, I have, see, I have asked Karthik sir to do that and he told that he will do, okay? So by tomorrow, I think it will be uploaded, all right? This is also recorded and it will be uploaded, okay? Fine, uh, fine. So in simple terms, limit is like uh, the value that the function approaches as your x comma y, for example, if that is the input as it approaches some point, right? In simple terms, correct. So sometimes limit might exist and sometimes it will not exist. It will okay. So before starting, there are a few ways to find limit. Okay. So if limit exists, what you can do is you can sometimes substitute. You can substitute directly. So this is possible when when is this possible? You substitute something when is the substitution possible hello when is the substitution possible it's possible when you you know when the denominator is not zero okay it is one by x square plus y square and it's x comma y approaching zero comma zero then you can't substitute directly because the denominator will become zero. So in this case, it's not possible. Let's say if it is one comma zero, then you can substitute. Okay, that's so fine. Sometimes what you can do is you can take the common factors in the numerator and denominator. Some common factors will be there, right? Sometimes. So what you can do is you can take those things and you can cancel them out. And after that, if you substitute, the denominator will not be zero. Sometimes this is possible. Then sometimes what you can do is for multivariable functions, uh, you can check the limit by by approaching that point through different curves. Like through y is equal to mx, you can approach this, or y is equal to kx square. Like this, you can approach the point at which you want limit. You can approach it to different uh, curves, and if for all the curves, if it is if for few curves if it is different and for few curves it's something else then it means that the limit does not exist okay and other than this you can also use this sandwich theorem like you want to find the limit at f of x comma y and if for all points if it is less than some g of x comma y and it's also less than some h of x comma y for example okay and if the limit of this is some p and limit of this is also some p then the limit of this will also be some p okay at a point of course yes yeah, so we are going to use these things to solve all right so hopefully this is clear and we can start if this is clear for you okay so the first question uh 
so this is direct substitution what you have to do is you have to find the limit of x comma y approaching 2 comma 3 of this okay x square plus y square minus y divided by y square minus x square all right and limit uh, x comma y approaching 2 comma 3 okay the first thing you have to check if the if you substitute this on the denominator you have to see if this is not equal to zero that is the case you can proceed with substitution okay when you substitute it in denominator you will get three square which is nine and two square four nine minus four will be five so denominator is not going to be zero so you can directly substitute this okay so this will be equal to uh two square i'm substituting x here and i'm substituting two for x and three for y okay so it's going to be two square plus three square minus three divided by three square minus two square all right so this is So this is 4 plus 9 minus 3 by 9 minus 4. Okay, so 4 plus 9, 13, 13 minus 3, 10, 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Okay, so the limit is 2. Clear? Hopefully the substitution part is simple, right? So if the substitution is simple, we can go to the next question. All right. Now for the second question, uh, there are two functions f and g. Okay. The limit of f as x comma y approaches zero comma zero is l. Okay. And the limit of x comma g of x comma y as x comma y approaches zero comma zero is k. Then what is the limit of x comma y approaching zero comma zero? That is for which of these are true. Okay. So which of these are true? Can somebody answer this? Which of these are true? One second. You can have this. So which of these are true? Is the first one true? Yes. Yeah. F of x x comma y plus g of x comma y is there. So you can you have this thing right the first there are few operations which are allowed on limits and one of those is this addition right limit of two functions f and g yeah these are all the rules about limits okay you have two functions f and g and if the limit of f as x approaches a x till approaches a till if it is capital f and for x of x till approaches g till if the limit is g for capital g for g then this linearity holds okay so you can write this as limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 f of x comma y plus limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 g of x comma y you can write this separately and when you write this separately you will get this l and k right so this is l plus k and similarly for multiplication also Okay, for multiplication also, this is the case. As you can see here, the lim limit of x till approaching a till f g of x is equal to f f times g, capital F times capital G. Okay, so that is the same thing here. So the second one is also true. Is the third one true? Will the third one be true? Again, the limit this x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 5 times f of x comma y and they are saying this will not be equal to 5 times l is this true it's false no not true right because as you can see here c times f here it's c times f and we can write it as c times capital f this capital f is the limit right so you can write this you can write this separately so limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 uh, C 5 times f of x comma y this can be written as 5 times uh, limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 f of x comma y now this one we know it is l right from the given it's l from the given this is l so this will be 5l and they are saying it's not equal to 5l so this is going to be false okay 
And the last one, same like multiplication, division. Now, the only thing is this k should not be equal to 0. What is k? k is the limit x of x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 for g of x. Okay. This is k and this k should not be equal to 0. In that case, this is valid. Okay. This is also from these rules. All right. The g, capital G should not be equal to 0 here. So this translates to k not being equal to 0. They are given that also. Okay. So hopefully the second question also was not so difficult. Uh, yeah. Any doubt? In between, if you have any doubt, kindly interrupt and ask. Okay. Third one. Consider the following function. Okay. Now it is like if x x comma y if even if one of these is not equal to zero, then this is the this is the value of this is the function. Okay. You have two inputs which is x and y, which are x and y. And if even if one of these is not zero, then this is the output. Okay. And even if one of this is and but if both are zero, then the output is also zero. Okay. So this is the way this function is defined. If x if x comma y if it's not equal to zero, then the output is four x square y square divided by x square plus y square. Okay. Sir, does it mean that uh, here x y should both should not be equal to zero? Or only one of them should not be equal to zero? Like both see any one of these should not be equal to zero. Okay. Because even if one of this is, can you just like uh, after asking? Uh, uh, can you just like, I'll just mute you, okay? I'm not able to speak. Yeah. See, the thing is, even if one of this is not equal to zero, then the denominator will not be zero, right? So x square plus y square, even if one of this is not zero, it's not going to be zero overall. Okay. 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 So that's why. Okay. Now, how do we find limit for this? You have to find limit. For x comma y approaching 0 comma 0. So how will you find for this? You have to find uh, limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 uh, for x square y by x square plus y square. Okay. X square, I'm sorry, y square. Okay. So how will you find for this? If you substitute x comma y directly, it's not going to be possible. Is there any common factor between the numerator and the denominator? Will you be able to take something common outside? Again, no, right? You have 4x square y square divided by x square plus y square. So yeah, there's nothing common which you can take outside from the denominator, right? So the second, this is also not going to be possible. Okay. But here they have asked what is the limit? Okay. So it means that there's something which exists. It's existing, that's why they are asking. So what we can try is we can see if there is some sandwich kind of a thing for this one. Okay. Clear? Can you see why if the first two options are not going to be possible? The first two way of going, it's not going to be possible. Okay. First is not possible because you can't substitute it. Denominator will be zero. And for this, that is, and there are no common factors which you can take outside and cancel out. So now the only thing is, you can see if it is sandwiched between something else. All right. So what you have to do is, uh, you have x square plus y square. On the numerator also, you have x square, y square. So you can take some of these. That is, you, you can take one of these x square or y square. Let's say you take x square, OK? Now, will x square be greater than or equal to 0? This is true, correct? x square will be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Yes. Yes. And it will be less than or equal to x square plus y square. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll divide everything. We'll divide this one on both the sides. Sorry, on all the three sides. Okay. So this will be 0 by x square plus y square. So the entire thing will be 0. So I'm just not writing. Okay. Will be less than or equal to x square by x square plus y square 
less than or equal to 1. Okay. Fine. Now we need to bring this in this form. Okay. So what the denominator is settled, the numerator is somewhat like you need more things to do, right? So you need 4 and you need y square. So you can multiply this on the numerator. So this will be like 4y square times 0 will be 0. Less than or equal to 4x square y square divided by x square plus y square. This is going to be less than or equal to 4y square. Clear? Till this, is this clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, now you can take limit. So we need limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0. Okay. So this is going to be less than or equal to 4x square y square. Again, limit here x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 divided by x square plus y square okay less than or equal to limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 4 x square y square now you can substitute this on the numerator right sir so, i think it is just 4 uh, y square no yeah, yeah i'm sorry sorry yeah 4 y square okay 4 y square here now you can substitute this on the numerator, right? There's no, there's not going to be any issue. So when you substitute, you will get zero here, right? Four times zero square, it's going to be zero. And here this is zero. So limit for a constant is going to be that constant itself. So this will be zero. So this is going to be less than or equal to limit x comma y approaching zero comma zero. Four x square y square divided by x square plus y square. Clear? So which means what? The limit is zero, right? Am I right? Yes. Here, this is also zero. This is also zero. Then this one has to be zero. Clear? Hope this is fine. So third one is zero. Uh, for the fourth one, now f and g are multivariable functions. Okay, we are. They have given something for f and something for g. You have to find limit x comma y approaching 1 comma 1 uh, f of x comma y minus d of x comma y okay let me just paste it here okay so as you can see we have to find limit x comma y approaching uh, 1 comma 1. Now the thing is, yeah. the thing is, if you substitute 1 comma 1 on the denominators for both, you are going to get 0, right? 1 square minus 1 square is going to be 0. Here also 1 square minus 1 square will be 0. So you can't directly substitute. Okay. So what we can do is we can use this one. And then they are asking us to find the limit for f of x comma y minus d of x comma y, right? So what we'll do is we'll evaluate this first and then we'll try to see if we can substitute, okay? Right? So first thing, f of x, x comma y minus d of x comma y, okay? So the denominators for both are same. Okay, so we'll just we can just directly subtract. So this is going to be x square plus y square. We can uh, take out the bracket and we can multiply. So y times y is going to be y square minus two x y minus y. Okay, and here divided by x square minus y square. This is f of x comma y. Okay, so minus two y square. Again, I'm removing the bracket, so it's going to be x square minus 2xy minus x, okay? So divided by x square minus y square, okay? Yeah. Fine. So here x square is there and here x square is there and minus is there. So these two will be cancelled. Minus is there, okay? That's fine. And y square plus y square will be 2y square. Okay. This 2 will become 2y square. And here also you have 2y square. So these two will get cancelled. Okay. 
and you have minus 2xy here, minus 2xy here, here minus is there. So this will become plus. So this will also get cancelled. So you are going to get minus of minus x. This is going to be x, x minus y by x square minus y square. Okay. Still, you can't substitute 1 comma 1 directly. First, is this uh, bringing these two together? Is this clear first? Hopefully, bringing these two clear, together is clear, right? I just taken out the brackets and I brought them together. Okay. Well, still, you can't substitute directly, but you can see that this is of the form x square minus y square. This one, you know, right? This is an identity where x minus y divided by x minus y into x plus y, right? a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b. I have used this. Okay. So I can take out the denominator. Now you have got some common factors. You can cancel them. So you're going to get 1 by x plus y. Okay. Now if you find limit, limit x comma y approaching 1 comma 1 of 1 by x plus y. So now you can substitute and there's no issue with the denominator. So you're going to get 1 by 2. All right. So 1 by 2 is 0 0.5. So hopefully for the fourth one also, it's clear, right? Just, uh, we have given f of x comma y minus g of x comma y. So what you can do is you can remove the brackets, subtract both. Then you can cancel the common factors. And if you, after that, if you substitute, there's no, there's not going to be any issue. Okay. Fine. Now for the fifth one, we have to find we have to find the limit x comma y okay approaching 3 comma 1 x square minus 3 x y square okay x square minus 3 x y square divided by x square minus 9 y power 4 okay x square minus 9y power 4. Okay. So if you substitute 3 comma 1, what will happen? First, if you substitute 3 comma 1 on the denominator, what will happen? It is 0. It's going to be 0, right? So 3 square will be 9. Minus 9 times 1 power 4, it's going to be minus 9. So this will become 0. Direct substitution is not possible. And is there any common factor for this? Yes, there is a common factor. Yeah, first, in, first uh, you can see that in the numerator, in both the terms, x is there. So we can take that common outside, right? So this can be written as limit x comma y approaching 3 comma 1, x times x minus 3 y square, okay? Now, as you can see, uh, this is of the form some a square minus b square right where a is equal to x and b is equal to 3y 3y square correct so a square minus b square will be x square minus 9y square, power 4 correct this one i hope you can see right so this one can be written as the denominator can be written as x minus 3y into x plus 3y 3y square sorry okay so again, it's of the form a square minus b square, okay? I've just split them out and you can cancel these two. So this will become limit x comma y approaching 3 comma 1, x by x plus 3 y square, okay? Now, if you substitute it in the denominator, there's no, there's not going to be any issue. So this will be 3 by 3 plus 3 times 1 square, okay? So this is going to be 3 by 3 plus 3. So 3 by 3 plus 3 is 3 by 6, which is 1 by 2, 0 0.5. Okay. Clear. See, uh, okay, revise your identities, okay? Like a square plus b square, sorry, a plus b the whole square, a minus b the whole square, a plus b the, plus c the whole cube. Revise those identities, okay? Because somewhere it might be useful for finding limits. Okay. So till now, there's no doubt, hopefully, correct? There's no doubt, I think we can proceed. Right. 
So next question, uh, we have to find the limit for a function again. Now, again here, if one of x and y is not equal to zero, we can, sorry. If one of x and y are not equal to zero, this is the definition. And if both are equal to zero, then it is zero, okay? So f of x comma y is f of x comma y is three xy by x square plus y square. If x is x or y is if it is not equal to zero, and it will be equal to zero if x is equal to y is equal to zero. Okay, so this is the definition. First, if f approaches if the function approaches to L as x comma y approaches to the origin, then find the value of L. What they are saying is the function approaches L, okay? As x comma y approaches origin. Now they are asking us to find the value of L. So how will you do this? So will you be able to directly substitute? Is direct substitution possible? If you substitute direct, what you have to find is we have to find the limit as L approaches to the origin along y axis. So, along y axis means what? So, along x y axis means x equals 0. Yeah, along y axis means. x is equal to 0, okay? So, which means we have to find the limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0. Now, if x is 0, we have to substitute this here, okay? So, if we substitute this, this here, what will happen? What you have to do is you have to find x comma y along the line x is equal to 0, okay? So, this will be 3 times 0 times y. Uh, divided by 0 square plus y square. So, this is going to be 0, okay? So, limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 along x is equal to 0 will be 0 here, right? You have to take and put 0 here. Am I right? So, this is going to be 0. Easy, right? This is going to be 0, okay? Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I think you are asking a doubt, but your background noise is very high. I am not able to hear what you are saying. No, sir. Actually, what I am saying is, uh, actually, hmm. I will follow it. Can you just repeat, sir? See, now, along, what? Along, basically, along x, o y axis, the concept taking like instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, you have a function, okay? You have a function. Now, what they are saying is, they are asking us to find the limit as x comma y approaches 0 comma 0 along y axis. So, like this is like, uh, you have uh, 3xy divided by x square plus y square, okay? I hope this is plotted correctly. So what they are asking us is, they are asking us to find the limit. Limit at 0, 0. Uh, as, sorry, what they are asking us to find is, they are asking us to find the limit, okay, as the as x, y approaches the origin along y axis. Now, which is the y axis? This green line is the y axis, okay? Now, we are approaching 0, 0 along this line. Here. Along this line, green line, you are approaching the y, uh, origin. Okay. So when you approach it in this way, what is the limit of the function at 0, 0? Okay. That's what they are asking. Now, y axis, what does y axis mean? Y axis means like your x, x comma y is, is, zero. is zero. X is zero always. Zero. Okay, so x is going to be zero. So if x is zero, then the function is going to be zero, right? Because you substitute x being 0 here. 
So if you substitute there, there the function itself will become zero. All right. The function itself is going to be zero. So if you approach the function along this direction, okay. In the when you approach the function along this direction, you are going to get zero. Yeah, sir. Numerator, numerator, uh, denominator also becomes zero, no, sir. Yeah, if the numerator is zero, the denominator will also become zero. Okay. So then the function value is not zero, no, sir. See, the function itself becomes zero. Then the limit is also going to become zero, right? The function's value along x-axis is going to be zero, anyways. Sorry, along y-axis is going to be zero. No, sir. What I am saying is, so numerator is becoming zero, but along that the denominator is also becoming zero, no, sir. So how can we say the function value is zero, sir? See, this is see, this is the function value, okay? Correct. Uh, just one second, you know. Yeah. 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 See, along y axis, x is going to be 0. So your first coordinate is going to be 0, second coordinate is going to be some y. Okay. Now, if you substitute this here, what will, if you substitute this here, what will this happen? What will this become? 3 times 0 times y, this is going to be 0. Numerator is 0. Divided by 0 square plus y square, this is going to be 0, right? The value of the function along y axis itself is zero, then the limit is also going to be zero, right? Clear? Uh, no, sir, actually, sir, uh, sir, y value hmm. is also becoming zero, no, sir, it's approaching zero, so y value is also zero. So, it is approaching zero. See, uh, it is approaching zero. Approaching means what? It is not in there. Sir, so okay. Close to it. Okay. Sir, if we if they don't, sir, if they don't specify anything that uh, along y-axis and all that stuff, then will that make any difference, sir? See, if they don't say, if they generally ask if limit exists or not, then you have to see if the limit exists in the first case. Okay. If they don't say if we are approaching to y-axis or not or something like this, then we have to see first if the limit exists. So how will we see if limit exists? We have seen few options, right? Directly substitute or find the common factor, or you can use the sandwich theorem. Okay. So if the limit exists, you will get some answer. Otherwise, if you approach the function through different curves, when you approach it, you when you approach the function at a particular point through different curves, and if you get different values by approaching through different curves, then it means that the limit does not exist. Okay. What I'm saying is, you have a function here. Let's say this is origin, okay? If you approach it along uh, y is equal to x square, and you're getting some limit p. If you approach it like y is equal to x, if you approach it in this along this line, and if you're getting some q, and if this p is not equal to q, then the limit is not limit does not exist, okay? So why it does not exist? Because that's the way limit is defined, right? Oh. As, as the input approaches a particular point which we want, the function at that, the value of the function at that particular point could be approaching, like what I'm saying is, you have some x dash. This is a vector, okay? Now the the value for f of, the value for x, the value for x dash is some l, okay? Let's say I'm saying. Value for f of x dash is some l, let's say. Now, if you approach x dash through different curves, and at different curves, if you are going to get different values, in one side you are getting L, and in one side you are getting P, that is, let's say this is 5 and this is 3, something like this, if you are getting different things, then obviously the limit is not going to exist, right? See, yes. in two dimension, it's like this, okay? Let's say you have something like this here. At, this is x is equal to 2. And from here, if the function is defined like this, then if you approach it from one side, you are going to get here, let's say this is 3 and this is 2. Okay. Here this is 2 and this is 3. When you approach it from the left hand side, you are getting 3. Okay. The right hand limit is 2. Okay. So both are different. So limit does not exist there, right? Right. So similarly, if you are now your input is not just your x-axis but it is also y-axis in this particular case okay xy plane 
So in this plane, if you approach this from, if you approach this point through this side, if you're getting three, and if you're approaching it through this curve, you're getting five, which means that there's something not of this form in 2D, right? Okay. It is, it's a plane, so you can approach it in different ways, okay? Whereas in maths one, you just had the domain being R. So you have either left hand side or right hand side. So you just check for two sides. Here you have to check for every side or you have to substitute and see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now question seven. Again, for the same function. Now this time we are approaching the origin through a different line. Okay. Now this line is y is equal to 3x. Earlier we approached the function along x is equal to 0. Now we are going to approach the function at the same point along y is equal to 3x. Okay. We are going to approach it along this line. Okay. So what is f of uh, x comma y along y is equal to 3x? You, we had 3xy divided by x square plus y square, correct? So y is equal to 3x. So if you substitute this here, you are going to get 9x square divided by x square plus 9x square, correct? I'm substituting 3x for y, okay? So this is going to be 9x square divided by 10x square, okay? So cancel x and x, x square and x square, you are going to get 0 0.9, clear? So this is going to be 0 0.9. Understood. Now notice one thing. You are approaching the origin, okay? But if you are approaching the origin through the line f, x is equal to 0, you are getting the limit as 0. As we saw earlier, the limit is 0 here. Now you are approaching the line, sorry, you are approaching the origin through the line y is equal to 3x. So this is going to be something like this. If you are approaching it along this line, y is equal to 3x, you are getting the limit to be 0 0.9. Correct. So obviously there is. So obviously you can say that the limit is not going to exist there, right? Because through two different, uh, let's say directions, you are approaching the point, and though in those two directions the limit seems to be different, so definitely the limit is not going to exist, correct? Are you all getting the point? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so this is 0 and 0 0.9. Okay, now for the eighth question, which of the following are false? Okay, we are just using the same thing for question 6, 7, 8. We are going to use the same function again. Now the limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0, it is 0. Is this true? See, now they are asking yes. not through some, now they are not asking along some y axis or along this line. They are directly asking what is the limit. Now what will you do? Well, limit doesn't exist. Sir. Yeah, it doesn't exist. Why? Because when we are approaching it through yeah, two different, different curves, times. we are getting, yeah, approaching the same 0, 0 through two different curves gives us two different values. One gives 0 and the other gives 0 0.9. Okay. So which means the limit does not exist, but they are asking which of these are false. Right? So if this is true, then this one is going to be false, right? These two are going to be false because they're is giving some concrete answers for this, which is not true, correct? And for the third one, the limit of the given function at 0, 0 exists. So this itself we can with this itself we can say this option is false, correct? But it's not equal to zero. So this option is also false. Okay. So hope this was clear. All right. Any doubt till now? No, sir. Okay. Fine. Now question nine, I'll paste it here, okay? Because I think, because we have to do some work here. Yeah. Now question nine is, they're asking for which of the following functions will you have limit being five as the, as x comma y comma z approaches 1 comma 1 comma minus 1. Okay. 
for which of these following functions will the limit be 5 as x comma y comma 0 approaches 1 comma 1 comma minus 1. Okay. Okay. So first thing we'll just see if we can substitute this here or not. Okay. Here if you substitute 1 comma 1 comma 1, what will happen? Substitute this 1 comma 1 comma 1, what will happen? This will be 1. This will be 1 times, sorry, this is minus 1. Okay. It's minus 1 here. So this is 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. And this is 1 times minus 1 square. Okay. So 1 minus 1, 0 plus 1 minus, sorry, 1 times minus 1 square. This is 1 square. Sorry, this is 1. 1 times 1. Okay. So this is going to be 1. So denominator will be 1 if you substitute this here. Okay. So here you can substitute. There's no issue. Here if you substitute, what will happen? So this is going to be 1 into 1 into minus 1. This is going to be minus 1. This is minus 1 times 1. So minus 1. And this is 1 times minus 1. This is also going to be minus 1. So this is going to be minus 3. Okay. So here also you can substitute. By tick mark, I'm just saying we can substitute. Okay. And third one, there's no denominator. So there's not going to be any issue. And fourth one, as you can see, it is e power something. What is the range for e? e power something. What is the range for exponential functions? What is the range for exponential functions? See, what I'm asking is... 0 to, zero have, to infinity. Yeah. If, if you have a function f of x is equal to some a power x, okay, then the range will be 0 to infinity, okay? Z, 0 not included, okay? Correct? So definitely this is not going to be 0 for whichever value you put here, okay? So you can substitute it at every point, sorry, for every function. Okay. So we can just substitute it here directly and we can see, okay. So here this denominator was 1. We'll check for the numerator. So this is going to be 1 plus 3 times 1 times minus 1 square and minus, let me just take these tick marks, okay. Yeah. So minus of minus 1 times 1, okay. So this is going to be 1 plus 3 plus 1, right. So this is going to be 1 plus 3 plus 1. So this is going to be 5. Denominator is 1, okay. So 5 by 1 is 5. So first option is correct, okay. They're, they're asking if the for which of the following is the limit going to be 5, okay. So for the first one, it's going to be 5. For the second one, do you want me to write it here itself or do you want me to write it separately? So we can solve it ourselves. Yeah, because I think if you write it separately, it will take a lot of time. Here we have seen that the denominator is minus 3. For the denominator, it's going to be 3 times 1 plus 1 minus of minus 1. Okay. The sir, 7 times. Sir, because it's a direct substitution, I think it's hmm. this, sir. Everybody, I mean, maybe, uh, yeah. The last one is little seem to be little complex. You can write or otherwise. Yeah, yeah. I'll do the last one. Yeah. I'll do the last one anyways. I'll anyways going to, I'll anyways do this one. But before that, I'm okay. You, you just have to substitute and see. Okay. You can substitute everything. Denominator is not going to be an issue. So will you all be able to substitute and see? Yes. Right. You can substitute yes. and see. Okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So then we can do the tenth question. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Sorry to disturb in between. Uh, actually, no, uh, 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 I wanted to ask uh, this uh, session is not uh, live streaming on YouTube and also yesterday's TA no, session. No, see that. Not see, yesterday's TA session, I have spoken to Karthik, sir. He will upload it by tomorrow, I think. Okay. And what about this it's session? Recorded. If... This is also recorded, but I don't have access to the YouTube channel. Account. Okay, okay. So, uh, can you please will ask be there him and... to. Okay, yeah, he will okay. upload, but I think he is having some other work right now. That's the issue. Okay, he will upload okay. it as so. Well. Okay, before the deadline for the GS, can he upload? Uh, I will uh, talk to him once again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, please, sure, thanks. Okay, okay yeah. go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Okay. See now we have question number ten. Okay. Yeah, they have given a function. The function is x power k y 
divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n. Okay. Now, this is going to be the case if x and y are not equal to 0, and it's going to be 0 if both are 0. Okay. Even if one of these two is not going to be 0, it's not, this is going to be the case. Okay. Now, here, what are k and n? k and n are some positive integers. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's going to be positive integers because natural number is from 0 to 0, 1, 2, 3. It's going to go like this. And they have given set difference with 0, so it's not going to be 0. Some positive integers. Okay. Now, which of these are true? Okay. So they have given a few cases. Okay. The thing is, we have a function is x power k times y divided by x power x x power 2n plus y power 2n. Okay. So they are given different cases for some equalities and inequalities. We have to see if the limit exists or not. Okay. If it exists, then they are asking for the values also. All right. So for the first one, so what they are saying is they are saying that the limit for numerator and denominator is going to be the same. Sorry. K is k is equal to 2 power n minus 1. Okay. This is the first thing. So what we can do first is first what we can do is we have x power k y divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n. Okay. Now what we can do is first we will divide uh, the denominator by x power 2n. Okay. So this is going to be x power k y divided by 1 plus y power 2n divided by x power 2n. Okay. Now this will become x power k y divided by 1 plus this y is there at the bottom. Okay. It's not there with the power. X power k times y. Okay. So this is going to be 1 plus y by x the whole power 2 power. Clear. So let me just write it there. So x power k times y divided by 1 plus y by x the whole power 2n. Okay. Now, there are few cases. So the first case is k is equal to 2n minus 1. Okay. k is equal to 2n minus 1. So both are equal. Okay. So what we can do is first we can see, we can approach this through different curves and we can see if the limits are different or not. Okay. Because if you directly substitute 0, it's not going to be possible, right? If you substitute 0 here, it's not going to be possible. Okay. And there's nothing common which we can take outside more than this. We'll come to the sandwich kind of thing later. But first, let's see if we can approach it through different curves and see if some limit exists or not. Okay. So let's approach it through y is equal to mx first. Okay. We approach it through y is equal to mx. This will be first. We'll just substitute mx here. So this is going to become x power k into m x divided by one plus or uh, mx by x the whole power two n. Okay. So this will be x power k plus one m yeah. mx power k plus one divided by uh, one plus m power two n. Right? Clear? Fine. We have just cancelled x and x here. Okay. So this is going to be 1 plus m power 2n. Okay. Now limit uh, x comma y approaching 0 comma 0. If you substitute this here, what will happen? I think one second. Just a second. Sorry. See what we can do first is uh doing this buttons. Sir, we have to divide the numerator by x to the power 2n also. Yeah, that also we can do, but I'm just seeing, okay, because just doing this, right? Yeah, you can do that also. What you can do is you can have x power k y divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n. 
you can divide everything by 2 yeah see we missed the point okay we have divided the denominator but we have to divide the numerator also right we have missed that point here okay i'm sorry we have missed this point we have divided the denominator so we'll divide the numerator also by x power 2n okay this is going to be x power k minus 2n times y by times y okay so this is going to be the case i've just missed one point so this is going to be x power k minus 2n times y divided by 1 plus y by x the whole power 2n okay now if k if k is equal to see if k is equal to 2n plus 1 okay if, if both are equal then what will this become what will this become see first, first option is sorry i'm sorry 2n minus 1 k is equal to 2n minus 1 okay k is equal to 2n minus 1 all right so if you take one to the other side this is going to be k plus 1 is equal to 2n what does this suggest what does this suggest? See, you have, let's say, 6. And you have 2. You Let's say you have 5. So, 5 plus 1 is 6. So, from this, what, what can you say? From this, what, you, what can you say? K is less than 2n. Exactly. Because 5 is less than 6 here. So, similarly, you can say K is less than 2n. Okay. So, if K is less than 2n, then this is going to be what? x power k minus 2n. This x power k minus 2n is going to be 1 by some x power something, right? See, x power k, k is less than 2n, okay? So this is going to be less than 0. If this is less than 0, this is going to be k power some minus something. So you will take it to the denominator. So this is going to be 1 by uh x power 2n minus k plus y by x the whole power 2n correct this is going to be y i'm sorry correct am i right yes okay now if you substitute mx y is equal to mx you substitute this here you are going to get something like mx divided by x power 2n minus k okay plus y by y is going to be mx okay so mx by x the whole power 2n okay so if you cancel x and x this is going to be m let me write this on the other side so this is going to be mx divided by x power 2n minus k times m power 2n okay Five plus I, I think it should be 1 plus if you forgot the 1 plus y by x <clears throat> sorry sorry yeah so here also we have to multiply it by uh, x power 2n minus 1 let me do it again okay because i have not written this clearly see we have x power k minus 2n times y divided by 1 plus y by x power 2n okay the first thing they have given is k is equal to 2n minus 1 okay which is k is k minus k plus 1 is equal to 2n okay so this will suggest that k is less than 2n all right so if k is less than 2n the numerator is going to be negative sorry x power something is there x power k minus 2n is there since k is less than 2n k minus 2n will be less than 0 okay so the numerator is negative first okay now what we will do is we will substitute y is equal to mx because we are up we are we are just trying to approach it through y is equal to mx we approach it through this line you are going to get x power k minus 2n times mx okay i hope i'm sir, writing this correctly now sir did you say that numerator is negative no the power of this numerator oh, oh, okay. that's right k minus 2n is going to be less than 0 okay so minus 
sorry, 1 plus 1 plus mx by x, the whole power 2m. Okay. So this is going to be m mx, right? So k x power k minus 2n times x. So this will become x power k minus 2n plus 1 times m divided by 1 plus m power 2n. Okay. Clear? See what I yeah, yeah, I'll just explain. Okay. Here you have x power k minus 2n. Okay. And here you have x. So you have a power m into a power n. This is going to be a power m plus n. So this is going to be k power k minus 2n plus 1. Okay. So k power k k minus 2n plus 1. Okay. A power m times a power n is going to be a power m plus n. So k minus 2n times sorry plus 1 is going to be k power I'm sorry k minus 2n plus 1. Okay. Understood, huh? See, I have just multiplied. Understood, sir. Understood, sir. Yeah. But what you can see is k is equal to 2n minus 1. So if you take these two to the other side, you are going to get k minus 2n plus 1 is equal to 0. Correct? See, given that, given that k is equal to 2n minus 1. Okay. So you take these two to the other side, you are going to get k minus 2n plus 1 is equal to 0. All right. So because of this, what we can say is this one is going to be x power 0. Correct? Am I right? Yes, sir. So because okay, of this is see it's given that the first option is k is equal to 2n minus 1. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. We have taken these two to the other side, so this is going to be 0. From this, we can see x power 0. Okay. So x power 0 is going to be 1. So 1 times m will become m. Okay. Divided by 1 plus m power 2n. Okay. All right. Now we will take limit. Limit x comma y uh, approaching 0 comma 0. m by 1 plus m power 2n okay see what is y is equal to mx first it's a line with slope m correct it's a line with slope m so as you vary the slope this limit looks like it's going to vary right see this is a constant okay this is a constant what i've circled is a constant no x and y are there so this is going to be a constant the limit will be equal to m by 1 plus m power 2n okay but the thing is, as you vary m, this value is going to change, correct? See? Yes. Yeah, if y is equal to x, if y is equal to x, then m is going to be 1. If m is 1, it's going to be 1 by 1 plus 1, right? So it's going to be 1 by 2 if m is equal to 1, okay? And if it's y is equal to 2x, then m will be 2. Then we don't know what n is, but it's going to be 2 by 1 plus 2 power 2n. Correct? Which may not be 1 by 2. 2 by 1 plus 2 power 2n. Right? So this may not be 1 by 2. So for as you change the value of m, you are going to get different values as limit. Okay? Which suggests that the limit will not exist. Okay? Is it clear? Yes. Fine. Yeah. So this is one thing. So first option limit does not exist. Okay. So for the first option limit does not exist. Now what is what if k is less than 2n minus 1? See what we had is x power k minus 2n times y divided by 1 plus y by x, 1 plus y by x, the whole power 2n, okay? Now, if k is less than 2n minus 1, okay? If this is the case, 
then when you take let's say why when you approach this when you approach this function along y is equal to mx then what will happen this is going to be as we saw earlier this is going to be k sorry x power k minus 2n plus 1 times m divided by 1 plus m power 2n this is what we saw already right if you approach it along some straight line this is the way it's going to be now if k is less than 2n minus 1 okay then k minus 2n plus 1 is going to be less than 0 fine so this is going to be some negative value so if this is negative then x will come to the bottom right this will mean that this is going to be something like uh, x power k minus 2n sorry 1 minus sorry 2m minus k minus 1 times 1 plus m power 2n is this clear see what i'm saying is k minus 2n plus 1 is going to be less than 0 okay i have taken these two to the other side okay so this is going to be negative so i have I've taken this to the denominator when you take that you have to multiply entire thing by minus 1 okay so this is the way it will look like now you cannot directly substitute limit right limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 now this is not going to be possible the denominator will become 0 am i right yes so which means even if you approach this through some other even if you approach 0 comma 0 through a straight line the limit will not exist okay if k is less than 2n minus 1 okay so limit will not exist okay this is for the second option now for the third option okay for third option we need not do this we need not uh, take it we need not write y by x power 2n and all we can directly use what we have from the question from the question we have x power k y divided by x power n plus y power n okay now they have given k is greater than 2n now k is greater than 2n which means this x power k is going to be greater than x power 2n okay fine now now what we, what can we do we can again see if we can approach it through some y is equal to mx right we'll first see what happens from this okay so x power k times mx divided by x power 2n plus mx power 2n okay so this is going to be sir mx power n no 2n 2n the question is saying 2n i think i have copied it wrong here it's 2n okay oh it's 2n yeah so this is going to be m times x power k plus 1 divided by x power 2n plus m power 2n times x power 2n okay so this is going to be uh, m power x power i'm sorry m times x power k plus 1 divided by m power 2n plus 1 times x power 2n fine okay so if you take if you take these two this will become x power k plus 1 minus 2m okay times m divided by 1 plus m power 2m okay now what they have given in the question is k is greater than 2m k is greater than 2n okay this is n so what will k plus 1 minus 2n be will this be greater than 0 or will this be less than 0 or will this be equal to 0 is going to be greater than 0 because from this we can say that k minus 2n is going to be greater than 0 okay fine so the entire thing is going to be greater than 0 so this will stay on the numerator itself 
okay now if you take limit what happens x comma y it approaches 0 comma 0 mx power x power something this is going to be 0 okay it will be 0 for all uh... yeah it's going to be it's going to be 0 irrespective of the value of the slope okay it's going to be 0 irrespective of what m is okay fine so this is going to be 0 so the entire thing will numerator will be 0 which means the entire thing will evaluate to 0 okay with this, will you be able to say that the limit will be zero? With this, will you be able to say that the limit is zero? Yes. No. Others? Will you be able to say? See, till now, is everything clear? Till now, why first two options are incorrect? Is this clear? Sorry, why the first option is not correct and why the second option is correct? Is it clear? First, I just want to confirm that. So the second option, why we didn't use that sandwich method and uh, try to evaluate it? No, no, till now we have not used sandwich for anything. Yeah, but for the not second. Yet. See, first, what we'll do is uh, generally the approach is like this, okay? First, we'll see if we can substitute or we can see if we can take something common outside. Or if it is looking too obvious, then we can use sandwich directly. Otherwise, first we'll see if if we approach it through different curves, we'll see if it is possible to say that the limit does not exist. Okay. We'll try that. And if we if we are not able to say that, then we'll use sandwich to verify if it is possible or not. Okay. Sometimes we'll not be able to use sandwich also. But I think for our uh, for our course, I think mostly these four will be the only thing. As far as I have seen, this is the kind of questions we are asked. Do you know why we have not seen is because in the first place itself, we have seen that it's going to come to the denominator, right? Yes. Yeah, so it's going to be zero anyways in the denominator. So limit will not exist. Okay. Now here, but here, what we are seeing is when you approach it through lines of the form y is equal to mx, to curves of the form y is equal to mx, you are getting zero. But with this, will you be able to say that the limit is zero? If see, this is given that k is greater than two n. Okay. It's given that k is greater than 2. All right. So will, is it enough? Is it enough to say? If you are approaching it through lines, you are seeing that it's going to be 0. But what does this approaching through line, what did we saw, see about that? This, this revisit and see, okay? I think in continuity there will be a yeah. The limit of a function exists and equals to L equals L precisely when for every curve, see for every curve, see passing through the domain through the point A till okay. The limit must be equal to L. This is for all for every curve. Is y is equal to mx the only form of curves? Is y is equal to mx the only form of curves passing through 0, 0? No. No. So what else do we have? What else can we have? In a parabola. Maybe y is equal to kx square, y is equal to kx cube, or y is equal to x square plus x cube, uh, y is equal to sine x. We have many things, right? So we can't check for everything now. You can't, you, you don't first have a finite, you don't have the list of everything, right? By the way, you don't have that in your hand first. So anyways, you're not going to be able to check, but we are seeing that y is equal to mx somehow it's looks like it's going to be zero. So what we can do is now we can use sandwich. Okay. 
now we lose sandwich so what we have is x power k times uh, y okay this is equal uh, divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n okay this is what we have so first zero is less than or equal to x power 2n less than or equal to y power 2 plus x power x power 2 n plus y power 2. do you all agree this agree with this yes right. do you all agree to this yes so why is this true because it's a even square even power yeah two times n is going to be some even power so the entire thing will be positive or zero okay so it's going to be at least zero and it will be at most be equal to this. So if you are going to add another positive squared term, sorry, if you are going to add another term which is uh, whose power is an even number, it's going to be less than or equal to that, right? So this is the bound, okay? So now you can divide the entire thing with this, okay? Divide the entire inequality with this one, okay? If you do that, this is going to be zero less than or equal to x power 2n divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n less than or equal to 1. Okay. Till now, I hope it's clear. Now, now you have got the denominator settled. The denominator is fine. Now, what you want is the numerator to match here. Okay. So, how is, how are you going to do that? Multiply. You can multiply. You can multiply this with. You have x power two n. You want x power k times y. So from this, what should you multiply to get this? You have to multiply x power k minus two n y. Yes. Okay. Now, first first thing which we have to see is k is greater than 2n. See, when you are multiplying, we just have to see if it is going to be there in the numerator or denominator afterwards. Okay. In our particular case, k is going to be greater than 2n. Okay. So, x power k minus 2n is going to be positive. Sorry. k, k, k minus 2n is going to be greater than 0. Okay. So, x power k minus 2n is going to be there on the numerator itself. Yes. First thing. Now, why is some real number? Okay. Why is some real number? Why is some real? Let me write this inequality there in the next page. We have 0 less than or equal to x power 2n divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n less than or equal to 1. Okay. Now, what we saw was if we multiply the numerator with x power k minus 2n times y. You will get the you will get the center uh, thing in the form of whatever was given in the question, right? In the question we had x power k by times y divided by x power two n plus y power two n. This is what we had. Yes. Now, if you multiply the numerator with this, we will get something of this form. Yes. But we have to be a little careful before we multiply. First thing which we have to see is so given that k is going to be greater than two n. Okay, so this is going to be positive. So this x is not going to go to the denominator. Okay, first thing. Second thing, y is some real number. Okay, now this k k minus two n should it be an even power or an odd power, or can it be both? K minus two n should it be even or odd? Can be both. Or both. It can be both, right? Can be both. So it can be both, which means x is also a real number, okay? X is approaching 0, 0, 0. So it can approach the origin through many directions. So it can be negative also, okay? So if the power is odd, you're going to get some negative number here. And if y is positive, the entire thing can be negative, right? What I'm saying is you're going to multiply with x power k minus 2n times y. This entire thing, can be positive 
it can also be negative yes. okay so so this is something which we have to see so since this is the case so we have two possibilities now now let's say if k x power k minus 2n times y let's say if it is greater than 0 if this is going to be greater than 0 then when you multiply the inequalities will not change okay it's going to be greater than 0 if you multiply the entire thing with this one the inequality will remain the same okay so this is going to be 0 less than or equal to x power k times y divided by x power 2n plus y power 2n less than or equal to x power k minus 2n times y okay so this is what we get if x power k minus 2n times y is greater than 0 but if it is lesser than 0 what will happen if it's lesser than 0 what is going to happen See, something is going to be less than 0. When you multiply it with the inequality, what is going to happen? Yeah, the, it will become less than, will become greater than. Yeah, the inequalities will reverse, right? Mm. Yeah. Let me just show a simple example. You have 2, 3, 4, okay? 2 less than, uh, less than 3, less than 4, okay? You have this kind of inequality. You multiply everything with, let's say, 2. Then this will become 4, less than 6, less than 8. Now, if you multiply this with minus 2, everything will become, this will become minus 4, minus 6, minus 8. Okay. Now, we have to reverse everything. Otherwise, we have to reverse it. You have to basically reverse these things if you multiply it with a negative number. Okay. So, this will be 0 greater than or equal to x power k times y by x power k minus 2n. Sorry. x power 2n plus y power 2n okay greater than or equal to x power k minus 2n times y okay earlier we had one here okay we are multiplying it with this so we have two possibilities now if you take limit on both the sides sorry if you take limit on all the three sides the limit is limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 okay so now will you be able to substitute it here directly yes you can see zero. here means you can't directly substitute it here but if you substitute it here the limit will be zero this is going to be zero okay if you substitute it here limit is zero if you substitute it here zero okay if you substitute it here also you are going to get zero which means this limit is also zero. Okay. This is also going to be zero. This is the limit x comma y approaching zero comma zero. Here is zero. Here also it is zero. So here also it has to be zero. Okay. Similarly, here also the limit is going to be zero. Okay. This is going to be zero here. Here also it is going to be zero. See, these are all in numerator, so you can sub, you can substitute zero here. Okay, there's not going to be any issue. There's going to be no issue, so you can substitute zero zero here. You'll get zero here and zero here, which will mean that the limit here also is zero. Okay. Okay. Understood this one. Yes. What we did was, see, what we did was. We were not able to substitute. Uh, then we were not able to take something common also. So what we did was we tried to approach it through y is equal to mx. When we did that, we see that the limit is zero. Okay, for whatever the m, whatever m we have, irrespective of the slope, the limit is going to be zero. Okay, but with that alone, we cannot conclude that the limit will be zero. So we proceeded. So we went to the next step, which is to see if the sandwich theorem holds or not. And for sandwich theorem, what we how we should start this inequality basically is take the denominators, okay? Put it to put it here. Put the denominators here. See if you can put one portion of the denominator here. 
and you can write less than or if you see if it is going to be less than or equal to zero okay then if you divide you're going to get one here zero here now if you're going to multiply the numerator with some x and y then this is going to be some product of some x and y's okay in that case the limit approaching zero will become zero here since it's zero here it's always going to be zero and you can multiply it with k so you can multiply it with some something corresponding uh, to this numerator so that when you multiply you are going to get whatever is there in the question okay you have to multiply it in that way fine but when you multiply you have to be careful with the inequalities we saw that k is going to be greater than 2n so when we this is going so from this we can see that x power k minus 2n is going to be there on the numerator itself this is important okay because if it is there on the denominator then you will have something like x power y by x power k minus 2n so this is not something which we want okay i'm just summarizing okay fine hopefully it was clear so the limit always exists and it's going to be equal to zero okay Like any any doubt? Okay, we didn't type here. Yeah. Okay, can we go to the next exercise? Yes, yeah, we'll go to the next exercise, okay? 9.5. Uh... Uh, sir, I actually had uh, some questions of uh, 9.3. Uh... I think 9.3 was done yesterday. Like which question? Uh, sir, uh, five, uh, question five. Just a second, others. Okay, the directional derivative of at the point, the unit vector. Okay. Then find the absolute value of u1. See here, what you have to do is, you know how to find directional derivative, right? Yeah. yeah. So you have to do f of 1 comma 0 plus h times this one minus f of 1 comma 0 divided by h, okay? This one, I think it should be straightforward, right? Sir, uh, I couldn't solve it. Like, uh, can you solve it? See, it's going to, I'll just quickly see, okay, because the recording was yeah, there yeah. already. So, x sine y, okay. So, you have, uh, you have 1 comma 0, right? Yeah, 1 comma 0 plus some h times u1 comma u2, okay. So, h u1 plus 1 comma h u2, okay. And, uh, 0 0.8 okay so if you substitute this here you are going to get h u1 plus 1 times sine of h u2 okay minus uh so minus 1 times sine 0 so sine 0 is what sine 0, zero. Is Okay, so this is going to be zero. Yeah. So one times zero is going to be zero. So if you multiply, you are going to get h u one plus uh sorry h u one times sine of h u u two. Okay, plus sine of h u two. Sir, you didn't normalize it. No, it's like, given that uh... it's unit vector, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's okay, fine. what I was doing. That's what I was doing wrong. Yeah, I was normalizing. Yeah, because it's already there. And if you normalize, what will you get? U1 yeah, square yeah. plus u2 square, square root of that. And that thing is there, right? Okay, sorry. Okay, I'll set the background to white. Uh, everything was written in white, okay? So I think it's gone. Yeah. So can we go to so 
can we go to the next exercise 9.5 okay yeah see if you have doubt you just try and see okay if you have doubt you post it on this course before that i think the solutions will also be uploaded all right fine yeah now we have f of x comma y comma z is equal to there is some tuple okay x y comma x plus y plus z square now which of the following options are correct so what is the domain and codomain first the domain of f is r3 right you have three things so this is going to be r3 and codomain is r2 so this is straightforward now is this continuous How will you say that f is continuous? It's given that it's x x y comma x plus y plus z square. Okay. So how will you say that this is continuous if both are continuous, right? If both are continuous, right? So as you can see, you can directly substitute the limit, right? There's not going to be any issue. You substitute. Let's say you are approaching some x dash comma y dash comma z dash. To find the limit as x comma y comma z approaches this, you can directly substitute and see there's not going to be any issue. Okay. And since you are substituting, the value of the function will also be the same thing. Correct. You, you can substitute. So limit will exist. Okay. Substitution is possible. Okay, so limit exists exists for all for all vectors v in R three. Okay, it exists for all v in R three. Fine. So limit exists first, and since you're substituting here, the value of the function is also going to be the same thing as the limit, right? Am I right or not? You are substituting it for finding the limit itself, and to find the value of the function at that point also, you are going to substitute. So overall, both limit and the value, limit exists, and it's equal to the value of the function at that point. Correct? That's what we want for continuity, right? Limit must exist, and the value of the function at that point should be equal to its limit. Okay. So from this you can say it's going to be continuous. You can just take some arbitrary x dash y dash z dash and see. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, second one. So you have uh, f of x comma y is equal to cos y sine x by x. Okay. If x is not equal to zero and cos y, if x is equal to zero. Now is f not defined at x zero comma zero? Is it not defined? We have the definition, right? If x is zero, it's going to be cos y, right? So it is defined. Okay. So first, it is defined. Now, how will you say if it is continuous? So when will you say that something is continuous? If right hand limit is equal to left hand limit. No, 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 no. This is see that is only for R two. Sorry, and if your domain is R, if your domain is R, this is the case because you have only two ways to approach this point. L hospital domain, rule. Right? You should use the L hospital rule where you have to say. No, no. See, see. One second. I'm asking how. How can you say that some function is continuous at some point? How will you say that some function is continuous at some point? For continuity, what should be the case? It should be strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Huh? I'm talking about continuity. Sir, if it is uh, differentiable at that point, then it is continuous at the See if it is differentiable, it is continuous. But sometimes it's continuous but not differentiable. That is also there, right? Correct. See for continuity, limit must exist. Okay, limit must exist. 
okay at this point and that limit should be equal to the value of the function at that point okay okay first thing limit must exist then the value of the function at that point should be equal to its limit right so what we have to see is we have to see if limit what we have to see is if limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 at uh, cos y sin x by x okay cos y sin x by x we have to see if this exists and if this exists then what we have to see is if it is if it is equal to f of 0 comma 0 first you have to see whether this exists or not first we have to see if it exists if it is if it exists we have to find what it is and after finding this we have to see if it is equal to f of 0 comma 0 clear clear on how to check whether something is continuous or not see if you know limit then everything is going to be easy okay only thing is you must know whether limit exists or not if it exists you must know how to find it that's all if that is there then everything should be easy okay so what we have to do is we have to check if limit exists or not okay so limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 uh, cos cos y sin x by x okay cos y times sin x divided by x okay now you know this can be written as limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 cos y okay times times limit x comma y approaching 0 comma 0 sin x by x true correct right yes sir. yes so this is going to be if, see what is cos 0 cos 0 is one, one right okay and there's an identity okay? x, by x is also one yeah, there's an identity. Just sorry, I'm not, sorry, not identity. And there's a there's a proof for this. The limit x approaching zero sin x by x will be one. Okay, this is going to be one. You can just plot it on Desmos once and see sin x by x. This is going to be one. Okay, it's undefined, but the limit is one. The value of the function is not defined there, but the limit is one. Okay. So this is going to be one and this is also one. So the entire thing is one. Okay. So limit exists and it is equal to one. So substitution itself you are able to find. Okay. So this one, I think you learned it in maths one, right? Maths one, I think they should be there. And the other person who has doubt in 9.3, I think you should use this one there. Let's see if limit x approaching 0 sin x by x is 1. Let's see if you are able to use that there, okay? Okay, sir. But 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 you have you don't have sin x, you don't have sin, you had sin h u2, okay? So what you have to do is you multiply the denominator by divide like yeah, divide and yeah. multiply with uh, x u. Yeah, you yeah, do that and see if it works, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So the limit is 1. Now what is the limit exists okay and it is equal to one so what you have to see is if the function's value at zero comma zero is one or not okay if x is zero what is the value of the function cos y okay so this is going to be cos y and y is going to be zero so we have to see cos zero cos zero is what one so from this what we can say first the limit exists it's equal to one and it's equal to the value of the function at that point from this we can say that the function is continuous at that point clear everybody so what happens to the sign x by x for when we substitute at f zero zero t sine limit x approaching zero sign x by x is going to be one okay yeah so that, that's the same thing here right why is not going to be an issue here right 
is the same as writing limit x approaching 0 sin x by x. That's the same thing. Y is not going to make an impact here anyways, right? Mm -hmm. so even this, even is in like, the... this is like for whatever value on for uh, for every point on y axis, this is going to be the case. Okay. For every point on y axis, x is going to be 0. Okay. So everywhere sin x by x will be 0 there. Mm -hmm. Fine, huh? Okay. Okay. Or in 3D also, you can plot and see. Sin x by x. Oh, sorry. I think you have to write f of x comma y. This one. I think I have not plotted it clearly. You can plot and see, okay? The plotting, I think it's not correct. You just plot and see, you will get zero near the near y axis, okay? All right? So, which means it is continuous, okay? It's continuous at zero, zero. You have a separate definition, okay? That's why it works safe. Yeah, third one. So, there are a couple of things. H of, first thing, g of x is x cube okay so third question i'm saying then f of x is equal to or f of y is equal to cos y okay f of y is cos y okay now h of uv is equal to sin uv h of u comma v is equal to sin uv uv okay what we have is p of x comma y this is equal to h of g of x comma f of x p of x comma y okay this is going to be h of g of x comma f of y clear so what we have to do is first we have to substitute these things here so this is going to be h of x cube comma cos y okay so this will be sin x cube cos y. Till now is this clear? So we have done whatever was asked. Sorry. Yes. We have done the basics. Now we'll go into the question. So is P a scalar valued function? As a function, is it a scalar valued function or a vector valued function? It's a scalar valued function, right? The output is in R, correct? The output is in R. Okay. Fine. First thing. Now. So it's not going to be a vector valued function. Then the next thing is P is continuous everywhere. Since g times f is continuous everywhere in its domain. Okay. Now here, the next thing is saying p is continuous everywhere. They are also saying g is continuous everywhere while f is not continuous everywhere. Fine. So you have to see these things. First, they are claiming that f is not continuous everywhere in its domain. Is cos y not going to be continuous? Let's say if the domain is r. Okay. Then is cos y not going to be continuous? Going to be continuous, right? Cos y is continuous, right? In yes, slot in, yeah, cos y is going to be continuous. I think you will not be able to plot, but you can just see if you are able to plot. Cos y is going to be continuous, which means f is going to be continuous, okay? So the fourth option first, right away, we can say it's not going to be correct, okay? Now, third option is saying P is going to be continuous everywhere since GOF is continuous everywhere in its domain. See, what they are saying is this is going to be continuous. The reason is they are saying this is continuous and this is continuous. G is continuous and F is continuous. As a result, they are saying this is uh, P is going to be continuous everywhere. First, how will you check if this is going to be continuous everywhere? How will you see if P of x comma y is continuous everywhere? 
again you can just find the limit right let's say you want at some x dash comma y dash limit we you want to find limit x comma y approaching x dash comma y dash of p okay so what will you do you can directly substitute it here right you can directly substitute it here am i right you can directly substitute and you will get whatever you substitute you are going to get some value and that's going to be your limit okay so limit exists and the value of the function is also going to be the same substitution thing right so limit exists and it's going to be equal to the substituted value and the value of the function is also going to be the substituted value so it's going to be continuous okay but they are saying that it is going to be continuous because g and f are continuous see the wordings p is continuous since g times f is continuous everywhere in its domain first what we have to see is, is g times f continuous everywhere g times f is x cube times cos y right so will this be continuous everywhere this will be continuous right you take limit some x comma y approaching uh, x dash comma y dash x cube cos y cube y this is going to be just x dash cube cos y dash right and this will be so limit exists okay you can directly substitute and this is also equal to let's say this is some this is h of x comma y right i'm sorry yeah this is x h of x comma y right no no one second i'm sorry okay let's say this is equal to some k of x comma y okay so the value of the function at k of x comma y x dash comma y dash is going to be the limit as the function approaches x dash comma y dash correct Right, so g times f is continuous. Am I right? The limit exists. It's going to be just a direct substitution, substituted yes. value. And the value of the function, value of x cube cos y is also just going to be the same thing as the substituted value. Okay. So this is continuous. We have seen both are continuous, but because of this being continuous, will you be able to say p is continuous? That's the question, right? yes see uh you have you have g you have f okay this is input and this is some input you're going to get some g times f okay now from this only you're going to get from this you're going to get this is the output here so you have g there's a domain and you're going to get okay let me draw it in a different way you have domain for g and co-domain for g okay so this is going to be the output similarly you have for f you have domain and you have co-domain and you're going to get the output now you can see these two are continuous okay now you're going to take from these two you're going to take the input for p okay and you're going to get some output okay we saw p is already continuous we saw these are also continuous right now if this is continuous will you be able to say p is continuous can you get what i'm saying see you will send x here you are going to get x cube okay and you will send y here you are going to get cos y and here you are going to get some send some x cube cos y and the output is sin x cube cos y right am i right Yes. Now, so x cube cos y is your input for p. Okay. So this is the value of the function, right? This is the value of g times f. Only if this is some continuous function, the output also can be some continuous function, right? Because if you because this is sine function, your output is going to be something like this, right? So if there's some breaks in between, I'm just showing 2D representation, but I hope you'll be able to imagine. Now, if there's some break here, some corresponding break will be there somewhere over there also, right? Yes. And if there's no break here, there's also no, 
not going to be any break here. Okay. That is, let's say you have, you want some output here. Let's say you want some K. You want sine, you want sine X cube cos Y to give you some K. If this has to be K, it, it has, there must be some input X cube cos Y, right? What I'm saying is you want sin x cube cos y to be equal to k. Okay. Now for this to be possible, you have you, you should have x cube cos y to be equal to some sin inverse k, right? Yes. This must be equal to this. Okay. Now here sin inverse k, you'll get some value. Okay. For sine inverse k, you are going to get some value. Will you be able to write this as a product of these two? You will be able to write this as a product of these two, right? Let's say you are going to get some real number p. Okay. Now this p can be written as 1 times p, correct? Yes. Now this p is going to be written, can be written as 1 times p. Now this 1 can be, uh, you can get 1 as cos some cos zero is going to give you one anyway and p for every number there's some square root right for for cube root, I'm sorry. for p you have you will definitely have cube root of p only like only for square root you have to see if this is greater than zero only for square root if you have to find square root of p if square root of p must exist then p must be greater than zero okay Otherwise, you will not get real square root. But for cube root, p can be either greater than 0 or less than 0. Both are fine. You will anyways get a cube root. Right? And since this is continuous, everything is going to go in a perfect way. Correct? So, I hope I gave some intuition on why that should be the case. Okay? That's why if this is continuous, then this will be continuous. Okay? Yeah. Any doubt? Is there any doubt? No, sir. Yeah. See, for fourth question, what you have to... Let me just quickly go through, okay? Because I think there are some other tricky questions also. So, let me just quickly go through a few things. For the fourth question, what you have to see is, what they are saying is, P is going to be continuous for all T less than 1, but not equal to 0. See, what we have to see is this should be continuous, okay? We have uh, ln of 1 minus t, comma 1 by t, comma some 2t or something, 3t, okay? Now, if this has to be continuous, they are asking whether this will be continuous for all t, for all t less than 1, but not equal to 0. Is this the case? Will this be continuous for all t less than 1 but not equal to 0? Hmm. See, first thing, the limit must exist, right? So, when will the limit exist? What is the domain for this first? For a log function, what is the domain? What is the domain for log function? Sir, uh, one, 1 to infinity. 0 to infinity. 0 to infinity. Okay. So, the domain is like some 0 to infinity. So, 1 minus t should be greater than 0. So, t should be clearly less than 1. Okay. So, first thing, being less than 1 is important. Then, why should it not be equal to 0? Because this one should not be equal to 0, right? Denominator should not be equal to 0. Okay. So, other than that, the third one is not going to be an issue, right? 3t, there's not going to be an issue. So 1 by t, if the denominator is not 0, there's not going to be any issue. And similarly, if the if this is not 1, sorry, if this is less than 1, it's going to be fine. Okay. See, now this 0 to infinity also, as you have, you have to see that it is not exactly 0, okay? The range is like this, 0 to infinity, right? This is for log, the domain. I'm sorry. The domain is 0 to infinity, but without 0, 
okay so this should be the case right is it fine and one more thing what is ln of 1 they are saying that t should not be equal to 0 in that case what will ln zero. of 1 be? yeah because e power 0 is going to give you 1 right but how will you get 0 here if t is not equal to 1 i'm sorry how will you get 1 here if t cannot be 0 See, what they are saying is, what they are saying is, T will be continuous, okay, for all T less than 1 and T not being equal to 0, correct? Now, if T is not 0, then you will not be able to get 1 here, right? Am I right? See, limit t approaching 0 will give you 1. ln of 1 minus t will give you 1. Okay. ln of t will give you 1. Okay. But ln of 1 minus 0 is not possible, right? Because they are saying that you cannot send 0 inside. Correct. Uh, sir, but uh, the 1 by t will be undefined if like t is 0. That's what. See, that's what. If, if, if t is, yeah, there's some contradiction, right? I mean, there's something which is not going correct, right? If it is 0, then this will be an issue. If it's not 0, only then you will be able to get ln of 1, right? Only then you will be able to get ln of 1. Right? Because you need ln of 1. If t cannot be equal to 0, then you will have the limit being 1. Limit exists. But the value of the function, what about that? In the domain, if you don't have 0, then you cannot have 1. There. You cannot have the value of the function there, right? Can you get my point? Are you able to get my point? Sir, uh, can you repeat? See, what I'm saying is, you have ln of 1 minus t, 1 by t, 3t, okay? Now, if this has to be continuous. All the three have to be continuous. This one, this one, and this one. Okay? So, what they are saying is, what the first option is saying is, t, if t is less than 1, and t is not equal to 0, then they are saying that this will be continuous. So this okay. option is right, right? Okay, it's they're correct. asking for all, yeah, for all t. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. Really sorry. Yeah. Set of all three such that t is less than 1 and t not being equal to 0. Yeah. From this set, we have to see. I'm sorry. We need not check for 0. I'm sorry. Yeah. We need not check for 0, okay? I'm really sorry. We need not check for 0. Because it's not even there in the set. They're just asking for everything in this set. Is it continuous? Okay. I hope I was clear, right? We need not check for zero. Okay. Let me make it clear. So this is going to be continuous for everything in this, their specified set. Okay. Fine. Sir, I was making this mistake. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, the first yeah. Option, it was showing it was wrong. But then I reread the question it said to take all the incorrect options. Yeah. Fine. Okay. So I'm sorry, guys. We need not check for, we need not check for zero. Okay. Because zero is not there in the set and they are asking, this should be continuous only for everything in this set. That's all they are asking. Okay. So it is continuous and it is not continuous, of course, for R. Okay. Because right now we saw uh, at zero, this is not going to be the case, right? The function is not defined at 0, right? For 1 by t, it's not defined at 0. So this is not going to be continuous here, okay? So this is not correct. 
and p is continuous in t less than 1. This is also not going to be true, right? Now, in this case, this set will be there, OK? Now, for there are, now they are saying t is set of all t such that t is less than 1. Now, again, this cannot be continuous, right? Because t equal to 0 is here, OK? 0 is there in this set. But the but this is not continuous at 1. This is not continuous, right, at 0. 1 by t is not continuous at t is equal to 0, OK? So this is, again, not possible. Now, will t be continuous for set of all t in real numbers where t is not equal to 0 and, sorry, t is not equal to 1 and t is not equal to 0? Now the set is t such that t is not equal to 0 and t is not equal to 1. See, what happens if t is 2 then? Is t equal to 2 there in the set? Is t equal to 2 there in the set? Yes, it, it is, is there. OK, it is there. But log of, I mean, ln of, they have given ln. So ln of 1 minus 2 is ln of minus 1. Will you be able to find the range? It's, sorry, the domain yes, itself sir, is 0 to Right? So 0 to infinity, right? So you will not be able to see, OK? Sir, I had a question. Like, uh, if we remove 0, and then uh, if we check for con uh, continuity, do we have to check for the uh, neighborhood of 0, like if they are equal? I'm sorry. One sec see, uh, once again, before that, incorrect options. They're asking for incorrect options, OK? Yeah. Can you repeat? Yes, sir. Uh, like if we remove zero uh, to check okay. for continuity. OK, we have a set without zero alone. Yeah. So okay. to check for continuity, do we have to uh, check for the neighborhood of zero, like if they are equal? You mean to say if zero is here, let's say this is T. You mean to, you are asking about these things, right? The neighborhood means you are yeah, talking yeah. about these. You just have to check at this point whether limit exists. First limit should exist at this point. And function should also be defined there. But function, since t is not here, you can't define the function at that point, right? Yeah. But still, you you can have limit, OK? You can have limit. As we saw in one case, the sine, sine x by x, right? It's not defined at x. It's not defined at x is equal to 0. But the limit is 1, OK? The function may not have a value there, but still it limit exists. So even okay. if t is not here, you can check for the limit you can check for the limit, but depending on the question, you have to answer, okay? Okay, sir. Dep depends on the question. Let me just plug in my charge and check it. Yeah. So for next one also, hey, is the fourth question correct? Sorry, is the fourth question okay for everybody? See, in the given set, we have to see if this continuous, okay? That's all. You are given a set, and in that set, you have to see if it is continuous, okay? Fine? Yeah. Now, f of x, y is equal to ln of x square plus y square minus 1, okay? So what they are asking is identify where f is continuous. Okay, this is what we have to see. Again, we have a log function. So first, what is going to be the domain? Domain is going to be zero to infinity, right? Domain is zero to infinity. Okay. You have you have ln of uh, x square plus y square minus one, right? x square plus y square minus 1. All right. Now, you 
we have to check for identify we have to see where all for what values for i'm sorry we have to see where the function is continuous okay so first for continue continuity the function must exist right the function must exist at some particular point right so where all does log exist log will exist whenever x square plus y square minus 1 is greater than 0 correct am i right the input should be greater than 0 so whenever this is greater than 0 it will exist okay so x square plus y square should be greater than 1 okay this one as you can see is the equation for the circle with radius 1 the center is the origin right this is the equation for that but the points which satisfies this equation is everything outside this okay everything outside this circle which means the log is continuous the function is continuous for everything outside this circle okay fine so this is like set of all x comma y such that the norm is greater than one that is the norm square is this is what is x square plus y square this is norm of x comma y norm square of x comma y right norm square of x comma y is this so this has to be greater than one okay in simple terms they have given outside the circle with radius one and center being zero comma zero okay clear uh which question do you want me to solve from this because i think we don't have much time can you just say which question you want me to solve we'll try we'll we'll do it in the next class but right now immediately which which are the questions which you want me to solve Hello. Yes, Are you all there? Yes. Like, have you all tried this and? No, sir. Sir, I'm not yet there. Fine. Okay, I'll just give a uh, just a rough idea. I'll give okay because I have mentor session right now, so I'll just give a rough idea and I'll just. We'll quit now, okay? So you have a few functions given here. First, what is f? Uh, f is here, okay? They have given them in a tuple. So you have to see if it's a vector value or scalar value. This should be simple, right? So they are given in a tuple. So you can see whether it's vector value or scalar value. Now, how will you see if f is continuous everywhere? You have to see if first you have to see if g is continuous everywhere. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, guys. Okay. Sorry, guys. This is g is a function and it will take t in, three inputs. Okay. One input is p of x comma y comma z. Other one is q of x comma y comma z. The other one is r of x comma y comma z. Okay. So these are the inputs. So three inputs. So what is the output of g? Output of G is a real number, okay? UV by W. So you can see it's a scalar value, okay? Now, you have, how will you see if F is continuous? You just evaluate this and see. And first, you have to see if limit exists at all values. And if it exists, just see if, the, if it is equal to the value of the function, okay? I hope it was fine. Uh, So this one, any idea? This one, what you have to do is, first, they're asking us to find the limit as x comma y approaches 0 comma 0, okay? So first, what you have to do is, again, the same thing, okay? See if you can substitute. You will not be able to substitute. You will not be able to take anything common outside. Next, what you do is, you will just approach it through different curves. y is equal to mx and y is equal to kx square like this you can just approach it through different curves see if the limit varies for different values of m and k if it varies then it's not going to be 
it's not going to exist and if it is not varying if you see that it doesn't depend on the slope then what you can do is you can just use sandwich theorem and you can see okay like x square and y square are going to be positive so x square is less than x square plus y square uh, less than zero now you can take this to the denominator and you can see okay but try everything and see okay see just notice one thing here we have seen zero less than or equal to x square less than or equal to x square plus y square okay now if you divide everything by this what you will get is zero less than or equal to x square by x square plus y square less than or equal to one okay this is what you are getting now after this you need not multiply anything okay so because of this you see that here there is zero and here there is one so limit here will be zero limit here will be one right so so this will not be continued so you will not be able to conclude something right it is not sandwiched between the same limit right can you get what i'm trying to say yes just by dividing it just by dividing this throughout the inequality you're getting the function which you wanted okay but you see that this limit is zero here the limit is one it is not sandwiched between the same limit okay now sandwich it is not sandwiched between the same limit okay so because of that uh you have to try and see okay i have not tried this but uh you can just try and see maybe i think uh if you substitute y is equal to mx y is equal to mx if you substitute you will get x square by x square plus m square x square right this is what you are going to get okay then you can cancel x square you will get 1 plus 1 by m square so it, it changes as m changes right so mostly it's so it is not going to be the limit does not exist right at 0 comma 0 is it fine yes okay so like this you have to see and for eighth one again they have given a similar function but this time uh i think it's a slightly different function so you have to multiply more than you, after you divide i think you have to multiply something else so i think but i'm not sure whether this will go to numerator or denominator okay so depending on that you will get whether it exists or not okay but first try with y is equal to mx then if possible y is equal to kx square try with these two okay and ninth one this one i think it is simple you just have to see this one the denominator should not be zero right this comma i think it's given by mistake okay i'll just see here what they are asking us to find this again you have to see if f is continuous throughout r power three okay Denominator should not be zero. Just see where all is it continuous and where all is it discontinuous. Just see there. Okay. Now for the last one, just look at this. This is of the form x power k times y divided by x power 4 plus y power 4. Okay. This is of this form. All right. I'll just quickly see this. you have x power k y divided by x power 4 plus y power 4 okay what they are asking us to find is find the minimum possible positive integer value for k such that the function is continuous at 0 comma 0 what we have to do is we have to find we have to find k such that the limit there's a the function is continuous at 0 0 okay so if it has to be continuous the limit must exist and it must e be equal to the value of the function they're given that the value of the function is 0 okay they're given that the value of the function is 0 okay so you have to see for which one will the limit be 0 for which k will the limit be 0 notice this is of the form x power k y divided by x power 4 plus y power 4 okay Now, one thing which you can see is uh, if the limit must exist, 
then you can just try sandwich theorem, right? You can see x power 4 will be less than or equal to 0. So greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to x power 4 plus y power 4. So from this, you can get 0 less than or equal to x power 4, less than or equal to 1, divided by x power 4 plus y power 4. Okay. Now you multiply it with some x power k minus 4. You multiply this. Multiply uh, with x power k minus 4 times y. Okay. I'm just giving what you have to do. Just when you try this and see, just do it everything. Okay. You multiply this again. There's going to be this positive and negative case. Okay. Now, if you multiply this here, you're also going to multiply this here, right? So here also x power k minus 4 times y will come, right? On this side. Now tell me what should be the value of k such that the limit is 0. Here the limit will be 0. See, just one thing. It, it can be positive or negative, right? Again, just remember that one. Other than that, tell me for which value of k will the limit be 0? See, the thing is, this k minus 4 should be uh, greater than or equal to 0, correct? If it is less than 0, then this will go to the denominator. Again, you will not be able to find the limit. But if it is equal to 0, then the entire x power 0, you will get 1. So, there is not going to be any issue there. If it is greater than 1, also fine. But what they are asking is, what will be the minimum value for k? What is going to be the minimum value for k? The thing is, you don't want it to go to the denominator. For that, k should be greater than 0. k minus 4 should be greater than 0, which means k should be greater than or equal to 4. Okay. So, this is the logic. You don't want it to go to the denominator. Okay. Fine. Just try this and see. If not, we'll solve it in the next class also. Okay. Fine. Any doubt? The concern regarding uh, quiz 2 so uh, so there was like a discrepancy with scores and all so we contacted support yeah. right? right so they said yeah. that uh, it will get uh, fixed but uh, still now the okay. scores are all still same yeah i think i think you are talking about you were the one who posted on this course right yes sir and a few okay. other students also yeah so uh, maybe i'll talk about this to karthik sir or I'll just talk once and see if I if he replies, I'll just post it there on the discourse. Okay. If not in the next in the, I think tomorrow or Monday there'll be a live session, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at that time you can ask to Karthik sir. And maybe there, there are there's something called as tickets also now, right? In the support. Uh what is that? There's something called as tickets in support. Oh yes, yes. So so I should be yeah, this, there also. I am not sure what this, that is. I think it's like some, will give, they'll be given some more priority. That's what I think. I'm oh, not yeah, sure. I think that is the support system. Uh, the, there is like that support system. tickets. There's something yeah, called yeah. as support tickets. Okay. I don't yeah, remember yeah, yeah. Exactly what that is. Just see what that is. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll check in there. But like uh, the, the thing is, uh, <laughs> the, some students got email from support saying that, oh, the scores have been fixed, but their scores are still the same. That's the thing uh, that kind of is like worrisome. Okay, I'll just talk to Karthik, sir, okay? okay. I'll talk and I'll post it on the discourse, okay? Sure, sure. So on that session, Karthik, sir, will be present, right? I'm not sure. Like, I don't know. I think, okay, will you be able to see at that time? Okay, okay. So for now, we should just wait or should we like do for anything now, I'll just... Wait till the next class, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much. And any doubt or we can leave, okay? Fine. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.